This is the intro video for the current balance experiment. We do have one safety concern with this experiment, and that is that the apparatus does have some gallium in it. Gallium is a metal that if you heat it up even slightly above room temperature, it becomes molten. It's also quite poisonous. So it's like mercury in the sense that if you get some on your hands, that's not necessarily dangerous. But if you ingested a little bit of it by mistake, that would be extremely bad for your health. So please avoid touching the gallium as much as possible. And we do recommend that after this experiment, you wash your hands. You should do that before you eat or drink or smoke. And in keeping with that, if your lab instructor usually is lenient about allowing people to eat or drink in the labs, this is one experiment where you may not eat or drink anything in the labs. So finish your snacks before you come to the lab. So this is your current balance, and I've got it at an angle on the desk, and that's not for artistic reasons, it's necessary. So you've got this arrow on the top of the current balance, that needs to be aligned with magnetic north. So you'll also have a compass on your desk, and the first thing you should do is plop that right beside the arrow and make sure that they're parallel to one another. The current balance consists of a rectangular piece of metal here, which is resting on top of a rod over here. Now this one on top has been suspended on a wire, which you probably can't see here, and the first thing we want to do is actually get things balanced properly. So this may have already been done for you, but if not, you want to loosen this screw and pull this bracket all the way out to the maximum. And then there is also this vein on the top, which you can pull out. So do this a little bit carefully, because there's only a piece of wire that's connecting this part on top. So you pull this out, pretty much to maximum as well. The next thing you want to do is you actually want to adjust this lower bar to be sort of in the middle of its scale, and you do that via these two knobs here. So here's what I mean. We've got this bar along the bottom, and it can be adjusted up or down via these two screws. So it's also got a little indicator here, and this is a millimeter scale. So just adjust things such that this indicator peg is sort of in the middle of the scale on both sides. Next, you make the adjustments you need to to the two gallium pots, which are these rectangular brass things down here. So you've got a 9 volt DC adapter that you plug in here. That's going to power the heater, which makes the gallium pots liquid. So it just needs to be heated up a little bit to go liquid. Then you're going to remove the caps on these. So you just unscrew the screws down here and remove the cap. And again, please avoid touching the gallium if you can. Next, you want to adjust the gallium pots upward so that they touch the little pegs that are attached to this rectangular bracket on the top. So you can adjust this screw down here on the other side and just lift the pot up until that little peg is submerged in the liquid gallium. So both of them are now. So that's going to give us electrical contact with this moving rectangular bracket. Next, you're going to adjust this counterweight such that this rectangular bracket on top is hovering about 3 to 5 millimeters above the lower bar. So if I go too far, you can see it's really floating way up there. I just want it to be no more than half a centimeter above that. So this bar is balanced just a few millimeters above the lower bar. So here's what that looks like on the other side, is the top rectangular bracket is floating about 3 to 5 millimeters above this lower bar. And next, you want to get the marker on this vein here lined up with the marker on the magnetic dampers. So I'm going to need to actually adjust this inward a little bit. And then I would put my face here. And I would look at these, because there's a marker on here and a marker on here, and I want to get them lined up. You can grab this magnetic damper and slide it up and down here. So you would get these two adjusted so that the two indicator lines are lined up with one another. So here's what that looks like. You can see the indicator line on the vein. You can also see the indicator line on the magnetic damper. And you can take this magnetic damper and slide it up or down until those two lines appear to coincide. So next, we're going to raise this lower bar until it's just touching the upper bar all the way along its length. 
You don't want to go too far, and to double check that you have it, you can check the vein at the back to make sure that those two indicator lines are still lined up. So I'm going to raise this now, and I'll want to do that on both sides. And as accurately as possible, I want to get it touching and parallel to that top bar. And you should do this fairly carefully. For the purposes of not boring you, I'm just going to do it quickly. So that looks okay to me. But I would go back and check that I hadn't gotten the two indicator lines on the vein knocked out of alignment. Now according to the manufacturer, when you've got these two bars parallel and just touching each other, the centers of the bars are exactly 3.1 millimeters apart. And next, and this might seem a little odd given that you just raised the bar, you're going to lower it again, but you're going to lower it a precise amount. So you're going to check what these two indicator pegs are at, and then move it exactly 3 millimeters down on both sides. So that means when I'm done, the centers of the bars will be 3.1 millimeters apart due to the width of the bars themselves, plus 3 millimeters, so 6.1 millimeters apart. So I've done that now. I've lowered the bar again by exactly 3 millimeters. So now we're ready to wire things up to run electricity through this. So we're going to be running current through both the lower bar and the upper bar. And because the current directions will be opposite, that means these two bars are going to repel each other. The bottom one is fixed, so we're just going to see this top one, which is balanced, float upward. So just to show you what this looks like, I'm going to turn up the current, and you'll see this upper rod start to rise a little bit. So it floated up just a tiny amount there, and I'll turn the current back down, and it sinks back down again. So here's the power supply that you're going to be using. It's capable of putting out very high current. And remember that current is more dangerous than voltage. High voltage means that it's got lots of energy, it can burn you. High current is what travels along your nerves and stops your heart, however. So do be careful with this power supply. So to begin with, turn your current knob all the way to zero, but turn the two voltage knobs all the way to maximum. So that way we're not limiting the current. But we'll be turning this up from zero. So this one all the way down, these two all the way up. So the first place we're going to want to run our current is through our ammeter so that we know how big the current actually is. So you'll go from your positive terminal to the 10 amp scale on your DMM. So like I said, this is capable of putting out large currents. We're going to need the large current slot on the ammeter. So 10 amps, not the milliamp scale. The next place we're going to want the current to go after it's been through the DMM is to this location right here. So there's a little fuse on there, and you plug in right there. The only thing is that we want our current carrying wires to actually run parallel to these two prongs here as much as possible. So add a couple of wires linked together to make them really long, and you'll go from your COM terminal, and then run your wires like so, and then double it back to plug into here. And I actually recommend that you actually tape your wires down to make sure that they're going to run parallel to these two current carrying wires in the apparatus. So I've got several wires here just to make it really long, and that gets plugged in there. Now the path that our electricity is going to take through the apparatus is a little bit convoluted. So the current goes in here, and then it goes up through the gallium pot into this floating rectangular bracket. So it goes in here, goes through the gallium, goes around here, and it's kind of come out through this gallium pot, and then there's another hookup here. And then we want it to go and go through this horizontal bracket here, the fixed one. So we'll connect a wire from this location over to this post. So we go from here over here, and you can plug in the back or the front. And then once the current has gone through this fixed rod, it's going to go from here back to the power supply. So again, we want a really long cable for this. So again, you should take several wires and attach them together. And then you'll put one wire in here. And you'll arrange the other one to lie parallel to these two current carrying wires. And then it'll go back to the power supply. 
And again, I recommend that you actually tape these to the desk to make sure that they're going parallel to the current carrying wires in the apparatus. So as much as possible, your wires are going parallel to these two posts. And at this point, you may be thinking to yourself, boy, this is a pretty complicated setup for this experiment. Yes, it is. So when you're setting things up all the way through, please read through the manual carefully as you're going, just to remind yourself that you do this step, and then this step, and then this step. Because as you can see, there's actually a lot of careful setup for the current balance experiment. So now let's think about how our setup is going to work. We've got this rectangular bracket, and it's suspended on a wire here, and using the vane and the counterweight, we've got things very gently balanced here, such that this floating part is floating exactly three millimeters above this fixed horizontal bracket on the bottom. So this guy is just carefully balanced. There's this little piece of metal here. We call this the pan. We're going to put some very, very tiny masses in here and that'll cause this floating bracket to sink down a little bit. Then we're going to turn up the current, and the current running through these two rods is going to cause them to repel each other. So the mass makes the top one sink a little bit, the current is going to repel it back upward again. So our job is to put little tiny masses in here, and then add enough current to put the rod back in the same configuration it started with. And we do that by looking at the vein at the back. So we look at those two indicator lines. Right now, they would be lined up with each other. When we drop a mass into the pan, they're going to go out of alignment, and then we'll adjust the current until those two lines are lined up with one another again. On your desk, you should have the box that contains your milligram masses. So there's a set of tweezers in here for you, and a little protective covering on top of the masses. And you use the tweezers to pick up these very tiny milligram masses. You're not going to be messing too much with the very smallest ones or the largest ones, the data range that you'll be studying is from 20 milligrams up to 80 milligrams. And remember to put everything back and close it up when you're done. So I'm going to add some mass to the pan now, so I just drop it on there, and that causes the upper bar to sink. And then I can increase my current to make it rise back up again. Now you only want to put enough current in to raise the bar back to its original location. So to do that, you look at that vein at the back and you put just enough current in to line up those two indicator lines again. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to put a 50 milligram weight in the pan now. And as you can see, the two indicator lines are no longer lined up. So now I can turn up the current and I just slowly increase the current until the lines are again lined up with one another. And then I'll take my current reading off the DMM. Now one thing that's important is that we don't want to put more than 10 amps through our apparatus, because that's actually a lot of current and it's going to cause things to start heating up. So we started with an initial rod separation of 6.1 millimeters. To ensure that you don't need to go over 10 amps, you need to restrict yourself to using 80 milligrams or less in the pan. So the maximum weight that you should put in here should be 80 milligrams. And when you're taking data at the high currents, take your data and then turn it back down again or turn the power supply off just so that you're not running large currents through this for extended periods of time. Also, just so you know, you're not going to be able to get accurate data when the mass is less than 20 milligrams. So you're going to be making a graph, that means you should get 6 to 8 data points. Just make sure that the span of masses that you add only goes between 20 milligrams and 80 milligrams. Now you'll remember how we very carefully arranged our current carrying wires to be parallel to these two rods. The current carrying wires might still be affecting our apparatus a little bit, and there's a fast way to get rid of that effect. What you would do is you'd reverse the current direction in these rods, and just repeat the experiment for all the same mass increments. So if you have time, I recommend you do that, where you reverse the current flow direction in the apparatus, repeat the experiment for the same mass increments, and then average your results. To reverse the current direction, all you need to do is swap these two wires on the power supply. So just pull them both out and move them to the opposite locations. And that will reverse your current direction through the apparatus. And finally, you're going to make a graph of the force that repels the two rods versus the square of the current in the rods. And from your slope of that graph, you should be able to solve for the permeability of free space. 
And once you're finished your experiment, there's one thing that we'd like you to do, and that is to lower the gallium pots. So just go back here, loosen these screws at the back, lower it down on both sides, and put the caps back on. The reason why we want you to do that is when you unplug the heater, the gallium is going to harden, and we don't want these little posts to be trapped in it when it hardens, because then if the apparatus gets nudged, it could damage them, just because they'll be locked into these pots. So please lower the gallium pots when you're done, and put the caps back on. And one more reminder, remember, when you leave the lab room, go wash your hands, and do that before you eat or drink or smoke.